Is that your full range, my dear? No, no. If we're going higher, thanks. And if we're going lower, people say it makes them feel uncomfortable. I can think of myself in first, you know, like don't mean, but at the same time, splendid, perhaps later. Now your voice projection. I can do that. Where is like where is like it projected? Yeah. Here or here? Or here or here. Anyway. 
anyway, I ain't going black. <laughs> Saw my brat the other day. She's looking well. Queening suits her. Don't think she misses being the part of our little club in one little bit. The maiden, the mother, and the crone. Well, I think it's safe to assume that old my brat no longer qualifies as the maiden nowadays. But uh, I've still got my 15 kids and uh, yes, is that tea ready now, Geetha? What about Agnes Nitz? What? Pedita? Pedita X. She showed some promise. Could have done as a third witch at the pinch. No, nearly forgot. Saw the man the other day. She's gone off to Ankle Hook. Had some idea about joining the opera. Opera? What's that? Well, it's a bit like a theatre, except with less acting and more singing. Less acting? Less acting than theatre? Mm. How do they manage that? Anyway, can't see Agnes, Pedita, being any good at that. She's a sensible girl, not flighty like those other actresses we've seen. She said Lanka was dull, my mum said. Dull? That's what I said. I said we'd get some lovely sunsets up here. And there's the annual fairy for every Soul Cake Tuesday. Regular! <laughs> Bleed your bloody hell! What's up? No sugar. Look at me, look. <laughs> and think about this when you do. Well, well, well. There's a thing. Do you see it? Yes, a shape. Like a skull. And them eyes. A very new pistol. I was pretty damn surprised, I can tell you. <laughs> she could be facing something bad at me. Mum, send me one of her letters I'm here. Look. Hello. What's all this then? A lacquer witch. Why have you got my post in your pocket? Who's writing to me? Dear a lacquer witch, I'd just like to thank you for the carrot and oyster pie. My husband and I. Keep that on you, stay right there. The thing is, my late husband said to me after dinner, he said, You know, Mother, it'll be a real shame if all the recipes just passed on when you did. So I started to scribble stuff down as and when, and then I thought it might be nice to have it done properly. So I sent it off to the Amanat people and my book, and they hardly charged me. And then a while later, they it's a wonder how they get their letters so neat. You've done a book. Any cookery? The Joy of Snacks by Lancro Witch. It's my known diploma. The Amanat Man, Mr. Goldberger, said that it sounded more mysterious. 123rd printing, more than 2,000 copies sold, one half dollar. You sent them money to get it printed. Only a couple of dollars. Only when they sent the money back, they hadn't quite got it right, and instead they sent me three dollars. So I kept quiet about it. Didn't want them saying that they wanted it back. Oh, yes. After all, money's not important, is it? Good, because I reckon that Mr. Goatberger owes you a bit more if there's any justice. Oh? About four or five thousand dollars. So it's a good job money don't matter. Be terrible otherwise. All that money mattering. What? Just could be a bit more. Beats me why anyone fall over themselves to buy a cookery book anyway. It is a cookery book, isn't it? Oh yes. Recipes and cookery anecdotes. Yeah. Look at the famous carrot and oyster pie, page 25, and cinnamon and marshmallow fingers, page 17 and humorous puddings and cake decorations. That's all of chapter six. <laughs> what one are you looking at? Strawberry wobbler. Mm -hmm. Geetha, this is me asking this. Is there anything in this book that isn't related to goings on? <laughs> <laughs> How about this one? Maids of Honor. Ah, well it starts off as Maids of Honor. But they end up as starts. <laughs> a witch of Lancra. Sorry, Esme. People don't think that's me. Yes, Esme. It's got to be changed. Yes, Esme. We're going to see your Mr. Goatburger, and he's going to put a stop to this. I can't have people looking at me and thinking about banana soup surprise. No, Esme. And I'll come with you and make sure you do. Yes, Esme. And we might just.
Francis dropping on young Agnes to see how she's doing. Yes, says Mary. But what will be diplomatic like? Don't want people saying I'm interfering. You won't find anyone calling me a busybody. Yes, Esme. That was yes, Esme. You won't find anyone calling you a busybody, was it? Oh. Yes, Esme. <laughs> Good. Right. Come on. Now. This is more like it.
these theatrical people, like children really, haha. <laughs> but I think you'll find it keeps them happy if you keep box A free on the first night of every performance, haha. <laughs> I remember that quite well. A go over $30,000 concentrates the mind a bit. And then they rode off. Quite a fast carriage now, come to think of it. Ah, uh, yes. Well, now that the ink is dry, I wonder if I might fill you in on the fine detail. We have this ghost. Every time someone loses a hammer in this place, it's because of the ghost. Every time someone's scene goes wrong, well, that's because of the ghost. Or even someone cracks a note. On the other hand, every time someone's scene goes well, or someone finds a lost object, well, that's because of the ghost. We let him use Box 8 on the first night of every performance. Sometimes people catch a glimpse of him, albeit fleetingly. And you say people like him? Like is a bit of a strong word for it. Well, it's pure superstition, of course, but people think he's lucky. Thought he was, anyway. Lucky. Luck is important, Mr. Bucket. I dare say luck was as important in the cheese business. We used to rely on Bennett. Look, you said a fault he was lucky. What happened? There have been accidents. Uh, what kind of accidents? A seamstress stitched herself to the wall. The deputy stage manager got stabbed by a prop sword. And you wouldn't like me to tell you what happened to the man who operated the trap door. <laughs> the ghost likes to leave little messages. There was one found today by the remains of the organ. The stagehand saw him and nearly had an accident. <laughs> Beware, you're sincerely the opera ghost. What sort of man sits down and writes a man of a laugh? And five exclamation marks I see. A sure sign of a man who wears his underpants on his head. <laughs> opera can do that to a man. <laughs> Look, at least let's search the buildings. The sailors go on forever and we'll need a boat, of course. A boat? In the cellar? No, they didn't tell me about the sub-basement. They are too busy not telling me that someone goes around killing the company. No one says, oh, and by the way, people are dying a lot and it's rising down from the cellar. They're flooded. <laughs> Didn't you have a look? Well, they said the cellars were fine. And you believed them? Well, there was rather a lot of champagne. Look, I pride myself in being a good judge of character and... Oh, blaster! Senor Enrico Bastilla will be here shortly. I can't risk anything happening to such a great star. Do you think you'll be all right? Cut throat, perhaps. What? Do you think so? I'm sure I couldn't say. Well, what shall I do? Close the place? It hardly seems to make any money as it is. Why hasn't anyone told the city what? No! That would be worse. Guards and rusty chainmail trampling around everywhere and asking stupid questions. Oh, I can't have that. Can't have them. Putting everyone on edge. On edge, Mr. Bucket? On edge? This is opera! Everyone is always on edge. Have you ever heard of a catastrophe curve? Uh, well, I know there's this dangerous bend in the road of A catastrophe <laughs> curve, Mr. Bucket, is what opera runs along. It works because of love and hatred and nerves, because an amazing amount of things dramatically fail to go wrong. This isn't cheese, Mr. Bucket. This is opera! If you wanted a quiet retirement, you should have gone into something more peaceful, like alligator dentistry. <laughs> now look, I may be just a big man in cheese to you. You may think I would know culture if I found it uh, floating in my tea. But I have been a patron of the opera for many years. Come here, Walter! Just come to uh, clear away the tea things, Mr. Bouquet. It's Bucket! <laughs> Theatre doesn't even come close to it. Opera isn't just theatre with singing and dancing, you know. Opera is opera! The singers all hate the sight of each other, the prom side staff won't talk to the opposite prom side staff, and that isn't even the half of it. Good grief. And I thought it was tough in cheese. Look, I paid $30,000 for this place. It's in the centre of the city, prime site. I thought it was hard bargaining. Look, how does this ghost live to box eight I'm supposed to keep free for them? We don't know. We've searched and searched for secret passages. Does he pay? But it's worth fifty dollars a night! There'll be trouble if you sell it! Good grief! You're an educated man. Some villain in a mask has a run of the place. Gets a prime box all to himself. Kills people. And you stand there and say they'll be trouble. The show must go on! Why? We never said the cheese must go on. Yes, the power of the show, the soul of the show, all the effort that's gone into it. It boils up everywhere. But what about these books? Who does the 
bookkeeping. We all do, I suppose. Money gets put in, money gets taken out. Is that important? Important? Because opera doesn't make money, Mr. Bucket. Cheese makes money. Opera is what you spend that money on. But what do I get out of it? Well, you get opera! <laughs> you put in money and you get out opera. So there's no profit. Profit? Profit? No, I don't think I've come across that word. I mean, I knew the place wasn't making much, but I thought that was because it was being ground badly. We have big audiences. We charge a mint on tickets. Now I'm told that the ghost runs around killing people and we don't even make any money. <laughs> Opera. Certainly an interesting way to travel. You do get to see places. Yes, about every five miles it seems to me. Oh! I can't think of what has got into me. I think it was that beer on top of the big sandwiches. Look out, potholes! Mm. Treacle pudding. Lots of custard. <laughs> that reminds me. I'm a bit peckish. How about you, Esme? I've got a bit pasty in my bag. How about you, mister? A bit pasty? Ooh. <laughs> Delicious. If I may, I haven't tasted pasty in, in ages. Beer? I'm not supposed to have beer. They don't flowers. That? Eh. Mm, don't tell them one, will you? You've made a friend of them. I'm Henry Slug. And what do you do, Henry Slug? Ah, you see, I'm on the stage. Yes, we can see that. Oh, no. I meant to us. Oh, we're slowing down. Yep, slow down. Last overnight stop before Adamore Court. Stow that, stow that. Everyone off the coast, please. Come on, Esme. Who's that? Who's that? Oh, it's Pedita, isn't it? Andre, what are you doing here? I was uh, looking at the place where the ghost tried to uh, strangle Tommy Cripps. Why? I uh, thought I'd better make sure it was all safe now, of course. Didn't the stagehands do that? Well, you know them. I thought I'd better make certain. But what are you doing up and about? Oh, I had to come down and get a glass of water for Christine. She didn't want to come all the way down to the pond by herself. Oh yes, some of you girls have rooms in the building, don't you? Well, I'll lead you to get Erin. Good night, Andre. That's stupid. He was on stage this morning. No one could be that fast. Pedita! Christine, what is it? I wondered where you got to. I was frightened. What up? The big mirror in my room. It talked to me. Can I sleep in your room? Your mirror talked to you? Yes. Well, one better switch another window, I suppose. Come on, then. Christine, please attend. Yes. Yes, who's that? A friend. In the middle of the night? Night is nothing to me. I belong to the night. And I can help you. Help me to do what? Don't you want to be the best singer in the opera? <laughs> oh, but the is a lot better than me. But while I cannot teach her to look and move like you, I can teach you to sing like her. Tomorrow you will sing the part of Ivy, but I will teach you how to sing it perfectly.
from on road, but no one amounted to anyone who went down that way. I made a few calls, singing taverns and so on. But every time I tried to make something better, they would just ask me, what's your name? And I would say, Henry. Henry Slow. And they would just laugh at me. <laughs> so I knew I had to change my name. So I moved to Queen. <coughs> when I became famous. You were stuck in every Basilica. Exactly. That was the problem. Everywhere I went, they went in a special efforts to give me pasta and tomato sauce with balls of squid. And also I really wanted <coughs> It's some, it's some roast mutton with gluty dumplings. Well, why don't you say? Hey, Eric about said Kate's path. There's nothing I can do about it now. But, yeah, uh, I accept this typical <coughs> appreciation for that past day. Why, thank you. We'll be sure to go. Oh, if you'll excuse me, I must catch up on my... Don't worry, shouldn't think it's had time to get far away. <laughs> it's well away. Yes, and may I say how pleased I am to see Grubo back in his proper form this morning? Yes, Esme. Here, do you want to visit the opera? I don't like fiction, as you know, but trouble is, it has its own force of attraction. It's where reality meets fantasy. Witches is drawn to places where two states collide. We feel the pull of boundaries, doors, mirrors, marks, and stages.
light letter. I will be obliged if Christine sings the role of iodine in La Triviata tonight. The weather continues fine. I trust you're well. Yours, the Opera Coast. Really? Well, then read this one. It's the rest of you. Ah ha 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 ha
Times are very difficult at the moment. People just don't, aren't buying books. I reckon everyone in Lankra buys your almanac. That's a lot of half dollars, and Geetha's book seems to be doing very well. Yes, well, of course. I don't actually have to pay you anything. You pay me to print it, and I'm giving you a money back. In fact, I think the accounts department made a slight error in your favour, but I won't. Your almanac is full of useful predictions. Handy stuff predicting. I can't do that clever stuff you do, predicting years ahead, but I'm pretty damn accurate over the next 30 seconds. <laughs> Indeed, then what's going to happen over the next 30 seconds? <laughs> um, ladies, please, follow me to my offices. I'm sure we can reach some amicable agreement. <coughs> I'm going to eat that big mirror now that I'm... <laughs> 
though she's a little robust, but then the great Jujuni wants to bring the tenor to them, and no one thought any of the words before it. It's the voice that's important. Hello? Who's there? Oh my God. You're the opera ghost. Now I've got you. Excuse me, 
I think I'd better take you home. I've got all these ladies and gentlemen to see to him. Anyway, it's dangerous to walk home. Walter usually walks with me, but he's working late tonight. Dangerous, eh? Well, we can't see you upset. Mrs. Ogg will see to things here, and I'll take you home. I've got all these boxes to attend to. I've got all these drinks to serve. Don't you worry. There's nothing I don't know about drinks. <laughs> <laughs> what about our Walter? You're worrying yourself silly. Walter's your son. Where's the bearer? I mean, I've always come back for him if he's working late. Walter walks you home, but you come back for him. It's... He is... Oh, he's a good boy, Mrs. Weatherwax. Sure he is, Mrs. Clinch. I'm going to take you home. I'll be back as soon as I can. <coughs> Where are those drinks, woman? Give me a drink now! I want my drink! Oh, no! <coughs> drink, woman, I'm hot. Understand? 
And I'm Mrs. Ogg. Good boy. Hello, dear. Do you know where I'm around here called Agnes? Agnes Lynch. You mean you've been it? I uh, think she's seen Christine in Mrs. Arnella's office. Christine? She's the short, thin girl in white. That's right. And I expect you're going to tell me where this office is. Am um, I? Uh, yes, it, it's just along the stage there. First door on the right. What a good boy to help an old lady. And would be a great idea if Captain Walter here to lose Dr. Unchef. Um. Oh! I expect he was a bit upset. Only to be expected. I'm sure a strapping lad like you can manage on his own. Yes. Yes, right. What a good boy. Right, very much. Excuse me. But here he is. Suppose he came down the middle of the act. All right, all right. We'll just have to go in the watch. But that would be discreet, discreet. Have you ever actually met a watchman? Oh, poor Dr. Anders Shafter. He's always so highly strung. More so than tonight. Tasteless <laughs> <laughs> or not, the curtain goes up in two minutes. Now let's go round up the orchestra. And they'll be in the pub over the road. Yeah, but uh, always so upset and distressed, sir. Will they be capable of playing at times? Well, they never have been, so I don't see why they should start now. The musician's bucket. Anyway, a dead body would upset them, so they turn into their beer. And then they'd be happy to play if you to offer them dead body money. <laughs> How is she? She keeps mumbling a bit. Cup of tea, anyone? Nothing nicer than a nice cup of tea. Well, I tell a lie, but there's no beds handy. <laughs> Just make a joke. No beds, Ned. How about you, miss? No, thank you. Do you work here? I'm just helping out Mrs. Plinger and take the morning. Oh, Mrs. Ogg, don't mind me. Oh, uh, there's the overture for Agatura. Well, if Christine is still unwell, then... Yes, Mr. Buckingham. Mm, how if we can find you all right? Oh, back. dear! <laughs> What's happened? Are you all right? I can't disappoint the dear public. Oh, jolly good. I should hurry along for now. Oh. Petita will help you. Great you, Petita. Yes, of course. And you'll be in the chorus for the duetta. Nearby in the chorus. Yes, I know. Oh, no, thank you. Uh, what a brave girl that Christine is. Oh, yes. Miraculous recovery that was not. So, your boy wants you to see your home, Steve. Oh, he's a good boy, Mrs. Weatherwax. I'm sure you're grateful for a strong lad to lean on. They torment him so. The poke fun at him and hide his broom. They're not bad boys, but they do torment him so. He ruins his broom, though, does he? Takes care of his things. I'm just in here, much obliged to you. Well, how are your walls here to now? We'll go stay at the opera. There's loads of places to sleep there. We expect your water sees a lot of what goes on around here. I wonder what your water saw. Right! There's only two of you legs and there's lots of us. No use in screaming, not in the shades. Oh, dearie, dearie me. Oh, please don't mind us, kind sirs. We only harm us old ladies. Haven't you got mothers? I've got the ones. Think I must have met her. <laughs> <laughs>
Köszönöm, hogy jó volt ilyen. Madam? Yes? Attend. Tomorrow we will sing the part of Iodine in El Trigatore. We have much to do. One night is barely enough. The aria in Act One will occupy much of our time. Your performance tonight was good, but there are areas we must build upon. So, Laura in El Trigatore, the master of disguise. Sometimes more vulgarly you known as the man of a thousand faces. She is more than capable. 
the second violin is a little slow, I feel. And the second art class might was frankly extremely wooden. May I extend my own welcome to Stanley Oversteller? I congratulate you on his arrival. Wishing you the very best, the opera goes. You don't intend to give into this. Well, she does sing superbly, Sausella. You mean the knit girl. Well, yes. But this is blackmail. I've been speaking to Commander Devines of City Watch. He and his men have been questioning the artists and staff. We've got to do this properly. Do you know Dr. Pontesharp was strangled before he was hung? Hanged. Men are hanged. It's dead meat that's hung. Really? Thank you very much. I appreciate that information. Very well. Poor Dr. Pontesharp was strangled, apparently, and then. Oh, really, so silly, you don't have a misplaced sense. I'm afraid it's worth it here. You're just going to have to find some way of dealing with it. Oh, hello, Peter. Mrs. Salzella, Mr. Bucket. Hello, Andre. Hello. You look dead tired. Should we start the excitement? Watch from down there asking questions. What sort of questions? Oh, well, no, no, watch. Was it you what did it? <laughs> They're rather slow fingers. Oh, dear. Something strikes the promise. I don't think Mr. Buffy could possibly cancel. People have been queuing for tickets. Because of Dr. Undershaft, do you mean? That's disgusting. Human nature, I'm afraid. Although, someone will be here to see Senor Basilica. And Christine is popular, too. Oh, sorry. I don't mind. How long have you worked here, Andre? Uh, only a few months. I used to teach music to the Sarah's children in Batch. How much do you think about the ghost? Do you know if he sings? I've heard he sings little critiques. To the manager. Some of the girls say they've heard singing in the night. They're always saying silly things. I mean, they say they've seen him in two places at one time. Look, I've got some old programs. I thought you might find the notes useful. You need one. I've got to put all these pastors. As you know, the show must go on. Everyone says that. The show must go on. The building's on fire. The show must go on. Scenery collapsed. The show must go on. Leading tenor died. They ask if anyone in the audience knows the part. And then they get their big chance while their predecessor's body pulls gently in the wings. Why? It's only performance for heaven's sake. Hang on. Walter. Walter Pinch. But he doesn't sing, does he? What? Oh, good heavens, no. It's a kind of convenient name. Sometimes someone has to play a role, a minor role. A role. They'd rather not be remembered for. Here they just go down as Walter Plinge. I suppose he starts as a joke. What does Walter think about that? Don't think he minds. It's hard to tell though, isn't it? Walter Plinge! Oh, sorry, Mrs. Carr! Oh, what's that kind of doing in my kitchen? <laughs> I suppose it is a little harsh. The poor chap is a bit daft. I'm not so sure I've met anyone here who isn't. Everyone seems to act as if it's only the music that matters. The plots don't make sense. Large ladies play the part of consumptive girls. No one can act. There should be a sign on the door that says, leave your common sense here. But of course, that's it, isn't it? It's the show that matters, isn't it? It's all show. Well, I should go and practice. You really picked up the part of I Dean, well. I've had a private tutor. Well, he's really studied opera. That's all I can say. No, no, it's disgusting. It's, it's, it's pandering to the most depraved taste. Well, I don't like it any more than you do. It's gone on too far. We're completely sold out. The show must go on. Oh, yes. Would you like to slit a few throats in the second half so no one feels disappointed? Of course not. We don't want any more death, so. Anyway, I believe we're past the worst now. Uh, where's Samuel Basilica? Oh, Splinter showing in his dressing room. Mrs. Blint hasn't been murdered. No, no one has a day, and it's only oh, ten past twelve. I'll go find him, shall I? So we can have lunch. <laughs>
perhaps you could send her to my office later. I can spare her a few minutes. Never let the great lady Esmeralda less than half an hour. I'll go get her, shall I? Esme? 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 Oh. Yes, give her hair. Esme? I'm not complaining or anything. But why is it you've been the posh opera patronizer? Because you're all coming as muck differ. Oh, right, fair enough. It's not as though I like this. I reckon I've probably spent more than a thousand dollars so far. What with the manicure and the hair and the dress and stuff. It's not including the coach or the rest Now, you said nothing was too much for a long girl. Now then, give the odd. You would be a witch if you didn't jump to conclusions. So I've no doubt to do some idea floating around in your mind about this ghost. Well, a sort of idea, yes. A name, perhaps. Something has crossed my mind. Hello, fish, too short, handy. Yes, it's all neat, isn't it? It's a lie. Like a lie about the masks. What lie about masks? Why do people say they hide faces? But they do hide faces. Only one on the outside. <laughs> To your satisfaction. You mean the ghost? You'll have a vast cave somewhere under the opera house. 
of the Lutris of Candles, a dinner table shining with crystal glass and silverware. And of course, he'll have a huge organ. Mm. On which, that is to say, he'll play the virtuoso style many opera classics. But it'll be damp, and there'll be rats. Hello? Anyone? Hello, Miss Nick. What are you doing down here, Miss? Walter. Yes, I've got two poor Mr. Pounder's job how he's passed away. No rest for the wicked. A lucky Grebo who's been helping me, haven't you? Yeah. come for an explore, have you? These old caves go all the way down to the river. Oh yes, I got lost. Sorry. You have to catch rats as well. I am a person of all jobs. I saw him in the big room in the valley school. Really? That's one of the lower walls, isn't it? What did he do? He... he ran away! Look, you can't stay down here with all the rats. I'll, uh, I'll see you back to your room, miss, all right? Thank you, Walter. And, uh, and then I've got to help out because we're short-handed. 
but that's the answer. If you're a right, it's Christine. Thank you, Dr. Sometimes in two places at once. But... So, the ghost isn't Walter. So that means the ghost must be someone else. Who seems to run the place? <laughs> 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 
Um, <clears throat> can I uh, order you anything? You'll have milk. Strength <laughs> up. What? I think. Oh, milk. I bring more sides to you. Well, you never know. <laughs> what are you looking at? Never seen milk to like before? No. Never quite like that. Oh, um, you don't see that little performance bell. Things to do, like so on. <clears throat> So, what do you think? You look like an assassin. I don't do. Now you be a good boy and stay here with Granny. Yes, Mammy. And no biting. Mammy. And no leaving bits of people on the doormat. No, Mammy. And no turning back into the pack until we stay. No, Mammy. You, behave yourself. Yes, Mammy. And no going to the lavatory in corners. Come on, it's not a start. Now remember, if you see anything, anything at all, do not hesitate to come to me. But, but we mustn't interrupt the show, Mrs. Hauser. Who would understand? Don't go to show, Mrs. Go on, Mrs. Hauser. Well, time! Let's just find the goose. Of course I don't want to stop this show. Now come on! Get in! Get up! 
big one-eyed bastard going after him like a scorpion cat. Like, wait, wait, have you got to get those flaming torches first? Yeah, yeah and the size of the pitchforks. That's just for vampires. Get on with it! What's happening? Well, they've called the ghost. He's heading to the roof. It's Walter Plinge. What, Walter? Our Walter Plinge? Yes! What is Walter? Surely not. He is a bit odd, isn't he? And he's always hanging around the place. It's not Walter. But that's who they said they were chasing. I don't know who they were chasing, Colette. But Walter's not the ghost. You wouldn't have had to fly how could you all think otherwise. Yeah. Come on, before we miss everything. No, wait! You mustn't! Why are you listening to me? It's not Walter! Come back! Not 
me. <laughs> not falling for that one either. That's when you start too stupid to be a witch, and then I go, no, I'm not. Then you end up winning again. You're so sharp, you can cut yourself. Fine then, once it's over, I'll let you go your own way. And then you've gone to Mr. Buckle's office and fetch me his account books. But go on! And look what I found, Mr. Todd. It's the ghost secret lair. Secret lair, eh, Walter? And is the ghost here? No! Oh, my, 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 it's a harmonium, isn't it? A sort of small organ. <laughs> an opera about cats? Never heard of an opera about cats. <laughs> then again, why not? Guys and trolls, miserable less. Who is he? What are we with, Walter? Well, the show started. That one's not finished yet. Come on, Walter, let me see. I'm sure your mum wouldn't want to leave the back one now, would she? Then, 
The ghost has been seen when South Cellar is perfectly visible. But how do you recognise this ghost, Mr. Policeman? Well, he wears his mask. Now, hang on and say that again. You're saying you recognise this man because he's got a mask on. And who's to say there's only one ghost? Hello, Mr. Ghost. Keep it busy. No, it's never the old come here, eh? Bad boy. Sorry, Mr. 
Sounds Look how oh, everyone stay! Mr. Sounds you see, company, this is your <laughs> This is your ghost! That is Mask! He's just an idiot who can hardly tie his shoelaces! <laughs> it's your fault, Walter Plinge! Yes, Mr. Sounds No! No one would believe Walter Plinge. Even Walter Plinge gets confused himself sometimes. Oh, well, Lady Esmeralda, huh? I'll stop being a lady now, Mr. Salzella. Now, I'll put you instead. Yes, indeed. This, this is a sword. <laughs> and we all know witches can't magic iron and steel. Get out of the way! Yes. 
Walter, I think you pay Mr. Salzella forty dollars. Is he some kind of monster? Right, he really abused it. Don't cry for Mr. Grosset. Very stout, that one. Good, well, good. Hey, uh, you know, Mr. Bucket, this is good. That's it. There's music and dancing and yet singing, but it's a long way from opera. How far? You don't mean, you don't just mean that it might be that you put in music and you get out money. <gasps> oh, good. Well, this calls for a very long, a medium sized drink. Come on. Thank you. 